Well, I forgot to say that we were, or I was traveling <laughs> earlier this week, Paul. Uh, have you been, <laughs> dude, I was in the, I was in the office and we're, well, we're like working through start 11 stuff and, you know, we're dealing right. with the moment two update that went out. And then I checked Twitter and then I walked over to the team. I'm like, Hey, have you guys enjoyed your five minutes where there wasn't any insanity in the windows program? Because that has come to an end. Oh, because of the insider thing. Yeah, dude, this canary yeah. stuff is messed up. This is, well, but here, here you go. I'm going to make it make sense right now. It's windows 12. No. Well, I get that. I get that part. I get okay. that. The insanity part, Paul throughout is okay. that if you were a dev user yep, and you're like, you know what? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. This is fine. I can live with this stuff. It's okay. one build per week. <laughs> this is what I signed up for. Yep. And then you log in the next day. So that's on Monday. You log in on Tuesday and suddenly you are now forced into the canary right. ring, which are basically flying too close to the sun and might just wipe your machine, but that's your problem. And so there's no, this... Paul, you can't get out unless you're like, I'm going to nuke this machine. That's the only right, way out. Right. I'm going to make, I'm going to bring this one full circle now. Cause you've just done this for me when just by talking, I, I, I made this connection. <clears throat> so one of the things I've been complaining about for several months is when Microsoft moved dev and beta out of sync with any windows release, they made it impossible to use the UI in windows to revert to stable when that version of windows went stable right mm -hmm. that was in the past and with the release preview now you can flip a switch in settings and basically you're in the insider program until that version of windows goes live and then you jump out of the insider program and you go stable uh, obviously this is a feature a lot of windows insiders would want to use um so i wrote about i finally wrote about it in december i think it doesn't matter when i wrote about it whatever and uh or at yeah, some point it doesn't matter um and there's a special use case of Windows and ARM because Windows and ARM people don't even have that option you just described of nuking it from space. Like uh, you can't download an ISO mm -hmm. legally or easily or whatever. So uh, I don't know, two, three weeks ago when I wrote sometime in the past couple of weeks, Microsoft said, hey, they didn't want to use the term magic Windows because, you know, I, I coined that term. But they use the term off ramp. Right. And they offered people in the beta channel a chance uh, maybe for two weeks to get to do what I just described, mm -hmm. but not, not dev channel. Dev channel guys have been effed like since day one, right? Well, since they switched the program last year. So now they, they've added the extra nuance that you just described. Not only are we not letting you get out of this damn thing, we're going to make it worse, <laughs> you know? So the only caveat I would say is people who are in the dev channel, hopefully are smart enough to be able to handle like a clean install. Um, I think, I think that most, you know, what I call AAA computers, you know, you know, PCs you buy from like Dell, Lenovo, mm -hmm. HP, even the Microsoft downloaded ISO probably brings you back to what is basically, you know, all the stuff you get from the PC maker as well as, you know, the Windows stuff. So it's, it's not, you know, it's not totally horrible, but yeah, it, it's, um, they've made this program so user unfriendly. And they they know what the engagement is. They know how many millions of people have stopped doing this. And they have to know when they're doing this that they're just going to lose more people. This is not going to get people excited. Mm. Now, the the only difference is um, it didn't happen this past week, but maybe in the future we'll start seeing things that won't be in Windows 11, right? They'll be in Windows 12. And that may generate Yeah, like recommendations in File Explorer. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Would that, is, that, is that coming to everybody, well, you know I think, so actually? I look at that and I think, well, okay, I, you, you've got these parallel development paths. And and it used to be really straightforward. In fact, I, I just last night covered this part in the book that I'm turning, uh, making out of that series, where in the Longhorn time frame, they talked about uh, I, to me about how they would fork the mm -hmm. development truck and how that worked. And it was very simple back then. Today, it's like this, you know, these vines that go off in multiple directions. But I guess the way to, it, it, let's just pretend literally all of the insider program is testing some version of Windows 11 except for Canary, right? So if you add a new feature to Windows 11 and Windows 11 is, or Windows 12 is Windows 11 plus whatever, obviously you have to add that to, you know, you're going to add those new Windows 11 features to Windows 12 now because Windows 12 will build off of Windows 11. Like, I mean, so it kind of makes sense, but it's goofy when you look at the um, the main features they just released in each of the builds that two, two of the three are crossovers between uh, Canary and Dev. The real kick in the gut was the first thing they did after making this announcement 
was yep. they released a dev build that everybody on dev previously could not get. <laughs> like it was like, well, well, so uh, tied to this problem is Microsoft does communicate things, but th there's no way to know that you're reaching anybody. <laughs> you yeah. know, like it's it's it's. <laughs> I understand building temporary UI doesn't make a lot of sense, but they do this enough that they need to have a UI, something that's like the feedback hub that appears only in Insider Preview program that says, hey, by the way, this is changing. You're you're running dev. If you don't do anything, you're going right to Canary. Like, it's not enough to put out a tweet. It's not mm -hmm. enough to put out a blog post. And in the worst instance imaginable, even the people who subscribe to the RSS feed of their <clears throat> blog post, their uh, blog, We'll never get the updates they do all the time where they go back to an update from a week or two ago and add something to the top of it. Guys, no one sees that. Yeah. <laughs> you you can't you can't yell something into a, into a forest and then just assume you've reached the user base. Like it it I, they have to this program is really mismanaged. It, it's it's so poorly done. It needs to be in the product. You need to if you use this thing, have a pop-up. It's it's the only right way to do it. It has to be in the UI, right? It's they got to do something. Well, I, part I, of I, me knows the reason why they did this is they mm -hmm. knew that if they spun up a new ring just called Canary, the <laughs> actual user population size of it would be next up. Unless up. they actually said, "This is Windows 12," right? Which they're not going to do. They don't want to say that publicly. Mm -hmm. But that that would get people to go to there. Yeah. Right. So, I don't know. I mean, it, yeah, I, for people wondering how we know that it's going to be that Windows 12, the mm -hmm. telltale sign is that they said they're going to be making kernel changes. They Historically, well, they've only ever made kernel changes when you're moving from versions of Windows. Yeah, so my telltale sign is someone told me that. <laughs> so, oh, well, there's quite literally that. Too, like, that, you know, hey, by the way, this is Windows 12. And so what, yeah. what I expect to happen is we're going to see a bunch of like random features mm -hmm. and whatever come out. And then if there are UI changes, we'll never see them until it gets announced. And then they'll have a new that's build right. that's built on top of this with the new UI so, that's there. Yeah, there are technical access. people like your coworker, Raphael, yep, Raphael. and uh, others like him who are going to look at these builds and say, hey, this feature is hidden inside of here. Yep. And and when they said the other t the other telltale sign, other than like I said, I was explicitly told, but is they, they're talking about not documenting this stuff. And I know, a reason dude, that. I saw that. Like, we're just going to start so, hot dropping just, builds. Uh, but see, I, again, that's a sign because yeah. they don't want to get they don't want people thinking about the next thing, right? Mm -hmm. That what, what they want people to be excited about right now is the well the, is the next version of Windows 11, right? They are the 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 handful of moments that might occur before then, and then the October thing or whatever it is. It would be a sad state of affairs if the October 23H2 release was nothing but a roll up of every moment that has occurred. <laughs> Since then, so I, I have to assume there'll be like one or two more moments, and then there'll be the 23H2, and each will include some ver number of new features, whatever. And I think after then, then then we have the conversation about Windows 12. I I, I I'm guessing. Or yeah, well, it seems like it would be based on everything we've known so far. 24H2 would be the Windows 12 release. So a year H2. from yeah, yes. this okay, fall. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, uh, 24 years, let me think about this. Yeah, three years, right? Three years. Yeah, yeah so, that would be right, it'd be right on track. So. Yep, that makes sense. Yep, I agree. It would be an incredible thing if Microsoft <laughs> released a Windows 12 just two years after Windows 11. Um, but no, I think I think you're right. 24 makes sense because Windows 10 right now will go out of support in 25. And maybe they handle Windows versions like they handle .NET versions where every other one is a long-term servicing release, right? Um, oh God, so don't Windows, give, don't give them ideas. I, 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 no, I, I, I think this idea has already occurred. I, it is a bizarre um, uh, historical fact that Windows 11 does not have an LTSC. It, it's it doesn't. It's the only one that's uh, the NT based one that's ever well, yeah. ever since they've had LTSC, whatever that is, uh, that hasn't had one. So I don't. Why wouldn't they do something like that? It almost makes sense. The even number of releases are long term, and the odds are. Short term is that what they do with .NET? I didn't think about it. Seven, seven is long term. I don't know. It's actually, it's the opposite of what .NET does. I think. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It, it, I don't know. Suppose the the only reason I hesitate to say yeah that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense is because we're actually expecting more UI changes in Windows 12 that could be potentially more radical than what we saw in Windows 11. 
And so UI yeah. changes like that are typically something they don't do for like a Windows 10, meaning like the long term. No, I, I agree with you. I, you know, Windows 12 as an evolution of Windows 11 UI wise would is kind of speaks to what you're saying. I, yep. Yeah. No, I, I, that makes sense. But whenever has Microsoft made sense? When was the last time that Windows made sense? Yeah. Uh, I hear you. No, that's your, that's a good point. I, but I mean, we're just we're spitballing here, guys. I'm just making stuff up as we talk, but. I think there's some element of, um, I don't want to call it insight. I don't know. I don't, and I definitely don't want to call it truth, but it, we may be onto something. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, there's, there, there are definitely reasons for what Microsoft is doing and they are absolutely not commuting, uh, communicating yeah. those reasons. So, uh, we're, we're searching for meaning, which you know, when you think about it has been our entire careers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I could say we've right? probably, uh, we've made a career of living in the coal mines, if you will. Yes. As I call him, Mr. Cheeps. 